Welcome to the Fit Dad Club podcast. My name is Travis Jones. I'm here with Jason Barrett. We have another episode for you this week where we're going to help you overcome your constraints and help them give you a guiding path to victory in your body transformation. Every week, obviously, guys, we're here giving you information, giving you guidance and trying to help you become the best version of you as a dad with your health and fitness and your mindset and everything else. Guys, as always, I'm going to lead with this from the start today, you know, share this podcast with a friend, rate the podcast, you know, leave a review of the podcast. Like this is how we can help more people and help more dads become the best versions of them so they can have you know, better versions of their families as far as them having been energized together, deeper, meaningful love, you know, having that health and vitality as a family. And I, I, I started with this one question that I was thinking about. It's like, you know, if your children grew up to be you, would you be okay with that? Uh, and this is just a question. You could be okay with that, but if your children grew up to be you, how you are right now, would you be okay with that? Is your confidence low? Are you under-energized? Um, are you strong or physically not strong? Are you, have, do you got the ability to um, have cardiovascular? Can you keep up with your kids? Do you want them not to be able to keep up with their kids? The, the level of self-doubt maybe, or the excuses you have, or the blame you have. You know, do you want that, would you be happy if they had your behaviors, they had your energy, had your confidence and your you know, physical strength and energy. If the answer is no, then it's time to do something about your health and fitness because your kids never listen to what you say. They listen to what you do. And, you know, you are the role model of your family. And I know it's a deeper question and it's the starting off the podcast with this more of a deep question, but I want you to ruminate over the question over the next week until the next podcast you know and if the answer is no like I, I would want them to have a better life or i would want them to be more have more energy or higher confidence i would want them to feel like they are unstoppable then maybe it's time for you to be unstoppable maybe it's for, time for you to pay the price daily and get after your goals so they too can get after their goals but without further ado jason welcome to the podcast today mate Hey, mate. Appreciate that. Now, we've got to get those things out of the way uh, initially, make sure everyone knows where we're at and what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing well. I was telling Trav just before the call, I got my uh, my walking pad set up, which I'm really, really excited about. So keen to get some steps in while winter is, uh, you know, <laughs> ruining life in terms of being able to get outside and actually go for a run around and go for a walk. So uh, while things are cold, I'm looking forward to, yeah, just to 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 being able to get my steps in while also getting my work done, you know, being being ultimately proactive but this this ultimately for me came back to i'm struggling to get my steps in right now like i'm struggling to get my um i'm struggling to get like hit my step target because um work was getting hectic and then it's like if i didn't time my walks and my stuff with when the sun was shining i wasn't able to actually you know, get anything done so i asked myself like, well what can i do within my constraints what are my constraints um so the two constraints time and financial so because we're on a bit of a budget at the moment with my wife on um on uh on mat leave at the moment um that's all well and good what we're doing is looking at well what can i do with what i've got all right let's let's ask that question um i can ask her for father's day is this what i'm going to have all right cool so this is my father's day gift it is the ability for me to to get my steps in while also working and also getting uh getting the job done so um yeah i'm i'm extremely happy with that and i've yeah i, I just had to ask myself that question it's like am i doing everything i can within my abilities at the moment Mm, I love it, mate. And I think, I think that's a big thing. And also for me, right? Like coming back from, you know, the staph infection, a little bit of sickness there for a while. It's like looking at my constraints, but how can I modify my workouts and modify my nutrition within the constraints I have that are still in line with my health and fit fitness or vitality goals. So I can keep being that role model and don't just like sort of drop into despair. I think that's at the end of the day when, you know, you get knocked in the face, you know, everyone has a plan to get punched in the face as Mike Tyson would say. But for us, you know, sometimes you do get punched in the face with your constraints and you need to be strategic about living within your constraints but still going after your goal. And I think that's a big thing um, because a lot of us, you know, we, we get like a bit of a, uh, a punch in the face and then we sit in the corner. We just sit there and go, oh, like, woe is me. I'm not going to be able to achieve my goals now because, you know, this happened or that happened. You know, we sit and we create the reason um, – that we can't achieve our goals because of that one constraint. When at the end of the day, like you started this journey of a body transformation, 
Now, any journey towards any goal when you're trying to achieve peak performance, it's like you're losing weight, you want to be the best version of you. Every single journey is going to have roadblocks, is going to have uh, constraints that one, you might know of, but definitely there'll be ones where you don't know of along the way as well. And it's how you deal with those constraints, like you deal with a roadblock and just keep moving forward is the difference between people who get their goal and don't, right? Because they don't realize, oh, no, this happened now. So I'm not... Everyone has a roadblock. Everyone has a constraint. Like you're not alone. And you have to understand it's like how I handle this constraint is how is the determining factor whether I get the goal or don't get the goal. I've had people with knee operations, with broken bones, with um, losses of jobs or with you know, marriage breakdowns. I've had so many crazy things across the last couple of years. And instead of making it the reason why they can't, they made it the reason why they have to, right? And I think that's a big thing because it's like, no, like, I know life's going to be tough. And when life's tough, I don't throw my health, my health out the window. I make my health more of a priority so I can meet life with the most energy as possible. And I think that's a big thing you have to understand. We don't go to negative coping mechanisms. We try and lean on positive coping mechanism when, positive coping mechanisms when life's hard. And that allows us to keep moving forward with somewhat of positivity. So yes, there's external constraints, but also there's just, constraints and I think we'll talk a little bit about both today and you know for example Jason's steps being a constraint it's not out of the blue it's just a constraint there is a season it's called winter and it's a little bit shitty to go for walks when you got a little one um, and to keep your steps up so it's looking at a constraint like how can I handle it within the time that I have which doesn't add more time to my day because again time is finite as well yeah, one hundred percent. You've you've got a limited. I think this is the biggest thing for everyone. You've got a limited allocation of resources, um, and those resources are time and the big ones for most people is time and money. Right, time, money, and energy are really your three resources, and how you allocate those um, just depends on your priorities. And this is why the, I love the principle. If um if you're listening out there and you haven't heard of it, of the big rocks, the big rocks principle, right? Um, what uh, there's like an educator who took a bucket and he filled the bucket with sand, right? He filled the bucket with sand and he had out there, he had a couple of uh, big rocks, like big stones, a couple of smaller rocks, and then he had the sand and then he had um, uh, some water. So what he was able to do, he um, he said, all right, try and get these big rocks into the bucket while the sand is in there, right? It's fucking impossible, right? You have to start scooping out sand in order to get one of the rocks in there. You can't have them in there and then he said okay cool so let's get rid of the sand and then let's put in the big rocks first okay cool they all fit awesome there were some gaps so we put in the little rocks next and the little rocks all managed to fit and then it's like and then we pour in the sand and then the sand all managed to fit as well if you put the big rocks first and the big priorities in your your to-do list first and you put them in your calendar and you make them your number one priority that is essentially what is going to allow you to focus on achieving your bigger picture goals because those are the big important things. That might be your relationship. That might be for some people your health and fitness, right? There's a lot of different things that it can be. But for me, the big, I think the big important thing that people forget is like they start putting all of the little shit first, right? They start going like, oh, I've got to focus on getting this or I've got to focus on getting that or, you know, there's all this other stuff is going on. But ultimately what they need to do is put in the most important things in the calendar, their priorities, and then everything else works around that. But a lot of people start the health and fitness program not even knowing what the fuck their big rocks and important things are. Like some guys be like, oh yeah, I can train five days a week. Oh, I forgot. I've got like things on four, night of the, four nights of the week. Well, no shit. You probably, uh, maybe you can't train five nights a week then. Um, but it's, it's super important to prioritize the big important things. Um, and as Trust said, just anticipate and act and anticipate and be aware of what is going to happen, what is going to come up and know, all right, well, what is my, uh, how long are these circumstances going to be? How long do I have to work overtime for? How long am I going to be on, you know, this shutdown project and, and away from the family? Or how long am I going to be back for? Just knowing and just even looking ahead a brief amount and going and taking some time to plan, knowing that your constraints are going to be there. Um, and I think another big thing for people is knowing that you can actually achieve the results without a full fucking bore six day a week, seven day a week training program. Like you can achieve the results with a lot less effort than you think you can. You think. Mm. 28 minutes a day, guys, is 2% of your day, right? Hmm. I would think, you know, we, again, another, another, like, 
another analogy that I liked the other day is it's if when you were you know eighteen they, someone got you a car and they said now this is the car you have and you can never buy another car right this ha- car has to last you until the last days you've ever driven like that is it. Now, it has to get you from point A to B. It has to get you to work. It has to drive your family around. You, If you only could ever have one car, you can't trade it in. You can't buy a new one. That is it. How would you treat that car? Would you make sure it's always serviced? Would you make sure the oil is always checked? Would you make sure that car is always clean? Would you make sure that you're using the best petrol for your car? Would you make sure that you're not, you know, making sure that, you know, one, it's getting serviced, but you're not overdriving it. Like you're actually driving it within its limits. You're not, you know, burning it out, right? Would you make sure that the tires are rotated? Uh, You know, you'd make sure all these things are done. You would also make sure it's in a good environment. You wouldn't leave it out under the hailstorms and under the trees. Like you make sure that it had a good environment for it to be around so it was safe and it was looked after. Now, you would look after this car because you want it to last. And yeah, we all buy new cars, but we only have one body. (laughs) And I think that's the biggest thing. Now, if we say we would look after this car with the best and most appreciation um, because we want it to last, like, why aren't we looking after our bodies like that? You only have one body. You want to hopefully it lasts your whole life and your life isn't shortened because you abused it. But, you know, why aren't you feeding it, you know, whole foods? Why are you poisoning it with, you know, processed foods or alcohol or drugs or whatever you're doing? Um, Why aren't you moving it? So, you know, you don't let a car sit there for six months either right? Because that's not going to be good for it. Like, why aren't you moving your car daily for 2% of the day? You're, like, you're putting good fuel in, making sure it's moved, making sure it's looked after, getting, maybe if you want, get your blood work done to see what's going on with your blood. It's like, you're doing your check and you check, make sure that you're not running your car with a check engine light on for the next decade, right? Like, cause you know, something's going to break quite dramatically. Like, I want you to make sure that we're maintaining it and it is only 2% of your day that you need to, to maintain your body. And that is just 28 minutes of your day. You can move for 28 minutes. It doesn't mean you have to sprint as fast as you can or lift the heaviest weights. You know, we're not trying to get one, probably into the Olympics or two, jumping up on stage. If you're trying to try, like in a bodybuilding competition or anything like that, if you're training for 28 minutes a day, but you can drop a lot of fat. You can get really fit. And you can be the role model that you want to be for your family with your health and fitness. And all it is is 2% of your week you have to dedicate to this. Now, if you can't dedicate 2% of your week to your health and fitness, then instead of saying, I don't have time, you simply just have to say, my health and fitness is not a priority to me. You Mm. need to change the language. It's not, I don't have time. And I'm not going to say like, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. Like I hate that right? But we do have all the same amount of hours, but some people do make it a priority and some people don't. And that's as simple as that. If you work 12 hour shifts, some people do. If you work 15 hour shifts, some people do. You can still fit 28 minutes because the 20, if the, if you work in 12 hour shifts, then I would say it's even more important to dedicate that 20, 28 minutes to move your body. So your energy is most optimal. So when you do go home, you do have that energy for your family. And it's not that you, you're at work and then you drive home and then you sit there and you're with them. Like you knew the, the harder you work, it is more important that you do feel your body even better and you still move your body even more because that's what's going to allow you to not burn out. Mm, exactly right. It's, you, it, it's preventative medicine. And a lot of people, this is the issue I think a lot of people have is they, when things get busy and hectic, health and fitness is almost one of the first things that they cut because everything else is um, like there's a list of the ways that you can uh, designate the things that you're doing in your life. There's things it's on a scale of importance and urgency, and there are things in your life that are important and urgent. Right, your wife goes into labor, cool, that's important, that's urgent. Right, you go to the hospital, right, or go to your your doula and have the water bath and and you know light the crystal candles. I don't fucking know. Um, there are things that you're in life that are important, but they're not urgent. Right. And for a lot of people, health, their health and fitness, I mean, look, ideally it is in that category, but for a lot of people, it's not important and not urgent. Um, that's the way that fucking a lot of people think about it. But for anyone who's actually starting on a transformation, their health and fitness is in the uh, important but not urgent category. So then there are things that are urgent, 
they you know they require attention but they're not important and that's the sort of shit that people get caught up with and that's the sort of shit that takes your focus away from the stuff that is important but it's not urgent right it's not required sort of it's like oh i don't need to lose this kil- these kilos right now you you lose you i mean you do you just haven't realized how important it is yet but yeah. at the end of the yeah, at the end of the day for me it's like you've got to realize it's like fuck it's important you've also got to make it urgent but you've also got to realize the shit that's distracting you is more often than not pointless shit mm. oh well, i was about to say it's like most people live in the not important not urgent yeah. until it becomes important urgent there is no yeah. other box it's like we're not important not urgent all of a sudden we've put on 20 kilos got the diabetes Um, heart disease is around the corner like something happens right like something like there is a health related illness and then your doctor has an intervention or your family has an intervention and it's like mate now it it, it, like this is important and urgent now like Mm. we have to hit a lot of people have to hit the very low to then bounce back it's like guys you don't have to hit the low like just put it in 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 the the important not urgent so it's important in your in your life, but it's not urgent. But it means you're getting you're gonna tick it off. You're gonna get it doing, get it done. Like for me, I was talking about values um, yesterday, and you know, there's obviously our health, we've got our work, and we've got our love. Um, like those are the three big rocks, you know. And for me, my health is the most important. <laughs> like that is mm. like if we're looking at like the the biggest rock out of all of them. And you might be, oh, no, nah, man, like, my love is the most important. I was like, dude, like, no, for me, I don't look at it like that. Like, I love my family, but I know the way I love them when I feel shit <laughs> with my energy. And I feel that, you know, when I'm not fit, when I'm not strong, when I have, I'm, like, carrying an extra 10 or 15 kilos, um, I know I'm tired. I know I'm crank- more cranky. I know I cope with, like, food alcohol when i'm like that as well because i'm in this vicious cycle i know i have brain fog i know i don't read to my kids as much because i don't have as much energy at the end of the day i just want to like switch off like i know all those factors happen when i'm not the healthiest version of me so for like for me to be the best version of me my health has to come first and then that means i'm actually better for my family and now i'm better for my work like work is the smallest priority out of the big three for me it's like health biggest priority because that means i can show up for my family better and work better family's next priority because you know making money comes and goes with life right you can always make another business you always can make more money but hopefully you're not making another family um well that's my for me anyway um so you can make another family but i'm hoping that i keep the one i have um so like that's how I look at my priorities list. And it, it's interesting. It's like it shouldn't, health shouldn't be at the bottom of the ladder. Like it should be at the top of the ladder, I think, for most um, of us because it allows you to be more confident and it allows you to show up better at work and in your family. And you want to show up as your best. So it's like you've got to carve out 28 minutes a day. Like you just got to do it. Whether it be a like try and go out for run 14 minutes one way, run 14 minutes back. It doesn't even mean, even mean you have to run 14. You might run for three, walk for one, and just do that a couple of times and go 14 minutes one way. And to, like, that is dedicating that 2%. Tomorrow, do like 10 squats, 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups for literally go in a circuit for 28 minutes. That's 2%. It doesn't have to be the most precise plan. It just needs to be a plan that actually gets executed. I think that's that's what you have to understand. You might ha- not have the equipment. You do have your body. I went through like on our Instagram and in our circle group, I posted up the group, um, a body weight workout yesterday. Body weight, you pump it out, max 30 minute time cap to do it. And you're literally going for, you're trying to get through 10 rounds of five exercises and get through 500 reps of body weight exercises. Now you might get through 300 reps for the first time you do it. You might get through 500, but if you do that one workout every single week, your goal would be to complete it in 30 minutes. And then the, the, the next goal is to complete it under 20 minutes. That means you're pushing yourself. So just with body weight, you can be pushing yourself pretty hard and getting some great workouts in. It's like, man, like go watch the gymnastics. Dude, look at the calisthenics in the Olympics. Those guys, those dudes, yeah, they lift some weights, but they're ripped as hell. And you can get pretty far with body weight workouts as well, guys. So don't let your constraints of not being able to get to a gym or the equipment you have be an excuse either. A hundred percent. Like 
I think this is what happens when people get married to the um, married to the process instead of the outcome. Yeah. Uh, and they get so caught up in, oh, well, I wasn't able to do it. And it, there's an element of perfectionism in this, right? People get so caught up with having to do things the right way or the perfect way, or I wasn't able to hit exactly 10,000 steps today. So I've basically, you know, I, I might as well have just fucking eaten KFC all day. Well, no, you're, you're 1,000 steps away from 10,000. That's, that's small. Right? It adds up over time if you're consistently down on steps or if you're consistently up on steps. But a small change does not make uh, that big of a difference. Like it's, It takes at least four to six weeks for you to start to noticeably start to lose muscle mass if you completely stop training, right? And if you are completely inactive as well. Like it takes a long time for you to really meaningfully lose muscle. It's, and you know what? You gain it back pretty quickly. So even if you're going through an injury, even if there's a stressful time at work, you focus on the things that you can control. And above all else, you can control your food. And that's kind of the big sort of driving point for me because the food is the, it's a lot easier to not eat 500 calories than it is to burn 500 calories, right? It's, it's literally inactivity. You just do, do less, right? Do nothing, do less walking to the kitchen. Those steps aren't going to make up for the tablespoon of peanut butter, right? They're just not. So when you are considering, oh, you know, I've got these constraints, like oh, money is tight and, uh, and, and I haven't got a lot of time. Well, guess what? If you eat less, not only will you spend less time eating, you'll save more time. You'll spend less money on food because you're eating less. Fucking mind blown. Crazy. Amazing. Who, who would have thought, thought? Right? I just who, who saved you on both of your uh, on both of your your um, challenges to me. Oh, Jason, but I don't have the time or the money to lose weight. You don't fucking need it. You need less of it. Right, you just you need to focus on. All right, well, you know what's cheap? You know, rice and beans and and chicken mints. Right, you can fucking cook that up. Boom, done, easy. Right, get a bit of get get that as like your staple meal. Five hundred grams of chicken mints, like lean chicken mints, it's like five bucks. It's not that hard. You can buy a whole chicken for like it's like five fifty a kilo at some places. You can buy a whole chicken and roast it and use that as your carbs. Like it's easy. It's guess what is expensive. Maccas, Maccas these days is getting fucking expensive. It's like twelve to fifteen bucks for a burger. I used to remember used to like a burger meal back in my day. I used to be like you know five to ten bucks max, right? Ten bucks if you were getting a deluxe Angus. But um, nowadays it's like fuck, this shit is expensive, man. And just little snacks and little treats and little buys here and there. That's what really saps it. Is that you haven't given yourself a dedicated focus towards your health and fitness and you're like you're using time and money as a bit of an excuse but you've always got the time and the money to eat you don't have to eat perfectly you don't even have to eat that much better you just need to eat that little bit less and you'll for most people and most of the dad's goals that are listening to this you'll drop that extra bit of body fat which is what you know is the biggest indicator and the biggest determiner of overall health for anyone who's overweight is by any means necessary dropping that body fat it's like the biggest health improver that you can do over the top of ice baths and fucking saunas and taking multivitamins and fish oil and eating raw liver. Like the number one thing that you can do that will get you the result, dropping that fat. That'll make you healthier. Um, mate, I, I completely agree. I think like when we're looking at it, so many people are saying it's, it, it costs too much, mm. but it, it doesn't have to. You know, if you, to put it plainly, guys, you can eat lean beef mints. And you have like 800 grams of that a day. If you want to keep it simple, you could have like 800 grams of potatoes a day and a bit of broccoli, cook that up, eat that every day. That costs like, for all of that, it costs about $11 a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it costs about seven, anywhere between like 70 to $85 a week. And yeah, you can change the lean beef mince to like a, a chicken breast, or you can change it to a cheap fish, or you can change it to anything else. But it's like, you know, it doesn't have to cost hundreds of dollars, like for you to eat, okay? And you can put some seasoning on there. But like, if, if money is your constraint, then act like money is your constraint and buy things so it's cheaper for you to do. You can make it, you can make your eating cost you $500 a week or you can make your eating cost you $80 a week. And, you know, I think, you know, if you're eating for $12 a day, I feel like that's a pretty good, it's like, what is it, like $3 a meal, I feel like that's a pretty good way of eating if money is your constraint. Because all of a sudden, like some people, they have, you know, like they have problems for every solution, right? But what we want to do is you want to have people who have solutions for every problem. Oh, money is a constraint. I can't eat healthy. It's like, okay, let's do this. Oh, but I don't like that. Well, then make more money and you don't have to have it. 
right? Like, like it is what it is, right? Like, you know, if, if this is the constraint you live with, then this is the way we hit your goal, right? Or remove the constraint. Either way, you want to eat mints and potatoes or other cheap cuts of meat and make sure we hit your calories, hit your protein goal, or we need to try and remove that constraint. And that's okay. Lose the weight, get your confidence up. You'll probably make more money and that will be less of a constraint, right? It just is what it is. Um, If your time's your constraint, do workouts at home. It don't have to drive 20 minutes to the gym, do an hour workout, drive 20 minutes back. It's an hour and 40 minutes away from your family. Walk into your garage and just start moving. Run 14 minutes away from your house or run 14 minutes back. Oh, but it's raining, it's winter. Man, your skin's fucking waterproof. It's all right. You'll be okay. Like, get it done. Probably not take your little kids out there while you're doing it, but for you, like, go for a run. Like, if that is your constraint, do not create problems for every solution. Create solutions for every problem. Like, just be a solution oriented person because we all have many constraints. But, and we always can find solutions to them. And the solution is not give up. We don't give up. We just go to the next strategy. A, B, C. You know, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And if you can't do that, we'll start going to like Roman numerals or something like that. We'll just keep going. <laughs> yeah, like, we'll find the solution. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll go, go through Latin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly right, man. It's, 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 and I tell this to my guys all the time. It's like, you don't need to, um, like, you don't need to, how like know what every single step of the way needs to be you just need to know what the next step is and mm. if that step is feasible and it gives you the the uh the result you're looking for fuck yeah awesome if it doesn't that's fine you keep on moving like it, it is a uh, you make your decisions based off the data you make your decisions based off have i been getting the result okay cool if it if for whatever reason any part of it becomes untenable you exactly as trev said what is the solution here this is exactly what i asked myself was um you know, we've got uh, we've got the ability to essentially you know lose the weight if we follow the plan, right? Gangster. If we can't follow the plan for whatever reason, we focus on what is the solution. Same thing I did with the um, with the walking pad. I, what is the solution? What what is a solution here? And is it worthwhile? Because I will probably be far more productive, not feeling like I'm stagnant and fucking still and stuck in my ass in the chair all day long, being able to get the body moving and getting that sort of motion going while still being able to do stuff. It's probably going to be fucking great for my productivity. So I'm probably going to make the money back that I spent on the walking pad by just simply being more productive and being more effective. Uh, It's just that simple that you focus on the solution and the solution comes, but it comes back to me for if you're asking shitty quality questions, you're going to get shitty quality answers. Oh, why can't I make it happen? Your brain's going to tell you exactly why you can't make it happen. Oh, why is my life so busy? Your brain's going to tell you why your life is so busy. And so being like, well, how can I make the time? What what can I do to make the time? What can I do to make the money? What can I do to make it work? Because fundamentally, big picture, final thing, you've got to fucking want it bad enough. It's got to be a priority for you. And if it's not a priority for you, you've got to take a good hard look in the mirror and say, am I happy with where I'm at right now? If not, you've got to make it a priority or nothing's ever going to change. It's so true, man. I think also at the start of your journey, um, you have to look at one, you can, your, your knowledge can also be a constraint guys. Yeah. Like I, I think, I think that's a big thing. So, so many, so many of us don't realize that knowledge is a constraint. We just look at the, you know, cause knowledge is another resource, you know, time. Okay. Money and knowledge. Like I would say those are the biggest three resources. And if you don't have that knowledge base, it's like, I want to execute this plan to get the results off as fast as I possibly can, right? Uh, I never, as fast as I possibly can, that doesn't um, cause me to gain weight back again or cause me to get sick, okay? So it's like when we're talking about this, context matters because otherwise I'll have some YouTube twerp banging on at at me. Um, But we have to understand, we want to lose the weight as fast and safe as possible to get the result we're after, there's no one I've ever talked to and says, can we lose this weight as slow as, as you possibly can? Like maybe like 50 grams a week. Yeah. Can we do that? Oh, wow. No, it doesn't. Every, everyone wants like 10 kilos in four weeks. Mm. Now that's too fast and you're not going to be able to hold those um, behaviors, but we want to lose it as fast as we can. So do I know how to do that? Oh, I've done clean eating. Okay. Well, that's probably not the fastest way and the best way. And it's probably not something that's sustainable long-term. 
So knowledge would be a constraint. Do you understand calories? Do you understand how to break through plateaus? Um, do you understand you know, what your training should look like? Do you understand how much protein you should be having? Do you understand your micronutrients or what carbohydrates are doing for you? Are you trying to just go keto and intermittent fast your way or in clean eat your way to success? Um, now, if you don't have a, like a, a dialed in plan, then like invest in yourself. Invest in yourself so you have the knowledge so you can keep the weight off for the rest of your life um, because you're acquiring knowledge so you're acquiring a resource that you, then you will have for the rest of your life. I think that is a big thing. Don't just look at, I'm getting a coach so I can lose weight. No, I'm getting a coach so I can acquire the resource to understand how to get my body to its most optimal weight and body fat so I feel fucking fantastic. That's why you get a coach. Right, And you know that if I put weight back on, I know how to get it back as, for as many times as I need to for the rest of my life. And I think that resource is like you know, invaluable. right? So I, I think it's understanding the different constraints and also at the start of your journey, go, well, this is what I go to do. I go to do you know, whatever it is, right? 8,000 steps a day. I'm going to you know, train for my 2% of every day. I'm going to hit this calorie deficit. Um, I'm going to sort of maybe stay within these food groups. Maybe you're cutting out a couple of kryptonite habits that may make you um, spiral into bad habits. So maybe you've cut a couple of things out just while you're on the way to your success. It's like, so what you've done is you've created constraints, okay, into your life to achieve your goal. And now you're along, going along, it's like, I don't like this, okay? You have to understand that, like, you don't have to love your journey. Hmm. You, you don't. Like you don't have to love every step of your journey. I'm sure that anyone who's a tradie out there, their first year as an apprentice, they didn't love their pay. Like I'm pretty sure like anyone I've talked to, like the first year is like, you know, the inquiring skills and all the rest of it, but they didn't love the first year, but they put, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. And all of a sudden they acquired the time and resources to enjoy their job a little bit more and they got paid a little bit more and it was great. When I started running, Running five kilometers sucked. Mm. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. For real. Right? Uh, man, man, I did. But now I can run 21 Ks. Like, uh, like we'll run 21 on tomorrow morning. Like Liv's doing her, um, her like two hour run. So I'm going to run with my wife. And I actually enjoy it. I was like, I'll run for two hours and I'll enjoy the run. I'll enjoy the banter. I'm not like panting. But it's like, you have to embrace the suck to get to the other side. Right? Like you just do. And sometimes, depends on where you start, that suck might be for a longer period of time. But you have to understand life can be hard now, which will then make it easier later, or life can be easy now. Instead of going for a two-hour run tomorrow, I can sit on my couch, eat donuts, and uh, watch some Netflix, and it will be hard later because then I will be sick. I will have health-related issues. So understand the constraints you're placing upon yourself to get this transformation understand it will be hard and you just embrace the suck. I think that is a big thing. It's like, I've chosen to do this and I'm willing to pay this price for this set period of time. And you're making like a personal agreement. For the next 26 weeks, I'm committing to myself to embrace the suck. When I want to press snooze, I get up. When I want to eat that, I say no. When I want to quit, I cut out a workout, I say no. When I say, do, I, do you want to do an extra rep? I say yes. When someone says, hey, do you want to go for a walk? I, I automatically say yes because I need to get my steps up, right? When my wife says, hey, should we have pizza tonight? Get off your diet? I say no, right? Like just in, like pre-commit to all these decisions for the next 26 weeks and go, this is who I am dedicating to being for the next six months of my life. And on the other side, you're going to be a different person. You'll be a completely different human. Your energy will be up. Your confidence will be up. You'll probably get laid more by your missus anyway. Like there is a reason why every single superhero that you, like not every single, 99% of superheroes have abs and big arms because that is what people look to. Like, you know, like we, we, that's our role models. That's the gods. So let's like, hey, let's get some aesthetics while we're out there. Get some abs. Your missus won't say, oh, I preferred you with a soft pudgy belly. Like she's not going to say that. Like she will like run her hands down your stomach, go, hey, I like this. Can you keep them? Mm. Like it just is what it is, right? So, and you'll feel even more confident for that. So guys, like there is, there, you, nothing will happen that is bad, but you will have to embrace the suck to get there. 
And it's up for you to go, yes, I'm willing to pay this price for this set period of time to get there. And then knowing that when you do get there, that it's going to suck a little bit less. Mm. Yep. And then, you, you, but because you're going to have your health and fitness and you're going to have energy to play with your kids as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Like it's, it's at the end of the day, it's all about decisions and consequences for me. And it's, it comes back to what we said even a couple of weeks ago, like owning the decisions and owning the consequences, both positive and negative. And it's like, cool, if I'm not willing to do the work, I can't whinge about the results I don't get. Um, you know, if I sign up for something and it doesn't work, it's like, well, fuck, did I follow it properly? If I did, okay, cool. You can outsource some responsibility, but your goal should be to focus on what it is that you can do, right? And focus on what, and, and take ownership and responsibility for your life. That's at the end of the day, no one else is going to do that for you. You've got to do that for yourself. You've got to take control of your health. You've got to take control of your financial future. You've got to take control of your relationship. Stop expecting your wife to do all of the work in that area. You've got to come to the fucking table with it, right? Um, I've been reading, this is like an amazing book recommendation, right? That I think everyone should read. You'd, you'd love it too. It's called uh, 10 Things I Wish You Knew About Your Child's Mental Health. And it's from uh, Dr. Billy Garvey, who was on uh, Hamish, uh, Hamish Blake's podcast, The How Are the Dad's Dad? And he's one of the most sought after developmental pediatricians in Australia. And he wrote this book yeah, entitled 10, um, yeah, 10 Things I Wish You Knew About Your Child's Mental Health. Fucking awesome book. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things that goes to show it's like, if you are willing to continue to learn and put in the effort and, you know, be there for your kids and talk to them and, um, you know, have things be open and just kind of continue to sort of strive and prioritize them, that relationship will get better. So, but it also goes to show the importance of prioritizing them and the importance of sitting down and having a conversation and not just like blowing things off because it's like short term or it's not really needed. Oh yeah, my kids know I love them. It's like, if you're not coming to the table and taking responsibility for that relationship, like you can't expect your kids to take responsibility for that relationship. It's for you. So if you ever want a better result in any area of life, you first need to take responsibility and say, I'm responsible for the outcome here. Now, what can I do about it? And that should be empowering, not disempowering, because you're the one who's in the driver's seat. It's very true, mate. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say about this? No, I think, honestly, I think that's that's it. I think there's a good sort of place for, for everyone to, to think and ruminate and then go, you know, hug their kids and kiss their wife and do all that good stuff. A little bit off, off topic, but this is something I was thinking about and I, I posted it a couple of years ago about it and someone did message me and said it actually helped them with their kids. And I've, constant, I've often came back to the thought process that I had. I remember when, it was literally when Jackson was little, that's when I posted about this. Mm. Um, so it was a good uh, eight years ago now. Um, and I remember him crying and it being so hard to put him to sleep as babies they cry you're there for hours in the dark um and yep. <laughs> just sitting by yourself um and i remembered sitting there going like and i did a post about it it was like you know instead of wishing that this time was over with jackson because i wish he just went back to sleep faster like every hard point in your life when you're raising a child there's so many beautiful moments of you know the words that he would mispronounce when he was a little baby because he you know wouldn't say things properly mm. or the crawling or the first walk or the way he would eat or the way he'd feed the dogs it's like and he would cuddle into my arms as that little baby and instead of getting frustrated because we're always in oh, I just want this part to be over I want to get to the next part where it's a bit more fun but it's like I'll never have the ability to cuddle jacks like that again mm. right and then you know, when I was first like teaching him how, we were teaching him how to walk and ride his bike. And it's like, you know, you, you want it, I just wish you could do it where I, you know, I didn't have to, you know, constantly focus that so you didn't have to smash your head open, right? And you wish that, because when they start walking, that's tough as well, right? Mm. So there's like this, and you're like, oh, I just wish you knew how to work, walk better. But like, there's so many beautiful parts at that time in their life. And then they grow to the next part. And they, at the moment, um, they constantly like coming out when they go to bed. Like both Jack said, I just need to go to the toilet again. Oh, did you know that dolphins do X, Y? It's like, mate, like it's 8.30 at night now. Like I don't need to know any more dolphin facts. And like, I think you have a bladder problem if you need to go to, to the toilet like 17 times after you go to sleep because they push the boundaries. They just want to keep doing it. It's like, but I go to, I, when I read them at night at the moment, and I love reading to them. There's going to be a time again when... Like they won't want me to lay in bed with them and read to them. It will get creepy. 
right? Like, it'll be a, when Jackson's married, I'm hoping I'm not laying in his bed reading to him and his wife to put them to sleep. So I was like, there's like, as we grow up, or as our kids grow up, a lot of the time we wish for the next evolution of them. And if we had the next evolution, we would, because of the frustrating parts, because every evolution in the child's life, there's a little bit of frustration. But where our focus goes, our energy flows, as we always talk about. Mm. But if we focused on all the beauty in those moments, because some days, like, you know, they'll grow up, they won't want to hold your hand. And some days they won't be able to cuddle them to sleep. And some days they won't want to read to them anymore. Some days you're just not going to, you're going to get to a point, you're just not going to be cool for a good 10 years there, right? But like, I, I just wanted to, because I was thinking about last night, and I know that the dads listen to this podcast. And I just want everyone out there, it's like, if you're finding your parenting being a bit frustrating at some points, like trade that expectation for appreciation, like just appreciate the beauty of the moment that you are in your parenting part of your life at the moment and focus on all the beauty and never rush for your children to get to the next evolution because you'll miss, because you'll never get these moments back again. Um, mm. I know it's a bit soppy and a bit different to finish it off, but I was thinking about it and I feel like maybe it's good for some people who could be frustrated with certain moments because, mate, putting kids to sleep is fucking hard. Like, you know, every- <laughs> <Yep>. so, <laughs> um, but like, but cuddling them and putting them to sleep, like it's so beautiful. And I mm. wish I had a baby again in my arms to do that. I would give the two hours at night time to do it. Um, but it's like, yeah. Just, just think about that. But you guys, if you do want, yeah, that's that's my TED talk. Yeah. But if you do, um, <laughs> if you do want to have more help, losing weight and getting to the best version of yourself, go to fit dadclub and we'll help you close the gap. We'll jump on a call, talk about where you are, where you want to be, how to close the gap between the two. That's fit dadclub and also. If you can rate the podcast, review the podcast, share the podcast with a friend. And again, we're here just to help you become, help you become the best version of you with your health and fitness and as a dad. Yeah, 100%. Jason, guys. anything else? No, nope, smash that. Uh, prioritize yourself, prioritize your kids, give them hugs, get fit for them, do all that good shit. And we'll see you on the next one. Talk to you next week, guys. Peace out.